All right, hover over the school bag. <laughs> we have to basically uh, go down at the same time. Two, one, click. I got it. We got it. We both got it. Bam, we Yay. duplicated the school bag. Look at that. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Project Zomboid, a survival game like no other where it's incredibly easy to be murdered by zombies or just about anything in the environment. Now, the only thing that makes you special in this world is the fact that you can improve, gain knowledge and experience. And using this experience, you can turn yourself from a level one pleb that will die to anything into a god that can defeat and master any threat thrown their way. There's just one issue. Gaining experience is a tedious and long process. Want to learn how to use electronics? Well, you're going to need to disassemble an entire city's worth of TVs in order to work out how to man a generator. Consequently, this game's slow. Very, very slow indeed. And you see, that slowness is wonderful. There's just one issue. The game doesn't have to be slow if you know how to exploit the living hell out of it. And that's exactly what we know how to do. For you see, today we're going to be using a whole bunch of super fun exploits that have just been added into the game thanks to the multiplayer release to not only find ways to duplicate items but also find ways to generate infinite experience without ever having to leave your own home. That's right, you can beat the entirety of the zombie apocalypse, become a level 69 god without ever having to leave your own home. You can just sit in there, power level into godhood in a matter of minutes and then just lovingly wander about the remainder of the game. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it's time for us to begin. Now, in order to pull off these exploits which showing in today's video, you just need to be on any multiplayer server. In my case, my lovely intern Connorbrow is hosting a server via Steam, so I'm just going to simply join his game. Next up, we need to choose our spawn location. It genuinely doesn't make a difference, so we're spawning in Moldra. Next up, create your character. Now, there's a whole bunch of overpowered characters you can be, and for the exploits we're showing in today's video, you can be any of them. Although, for the purposes of today's video, we're playing a park ranger, and the reasoning is simple. They have a whole bunch of modifiers for skills they can learn very quickly. At the same time, we're creating an obesely thin-skinned out-of-shape unlucky park ranger, but he's also going to be a fast reader, a brawler who's also fast at learning, and is strong. This boy is going to be powerful. As today, we're creating a literal god amongst men, we'll be playing as none other than Chad Maticus, the most perfect being alive, who also looks surprisingly like Farquaad. Okay, well, he's also going to be Farquaad from Shrek. This is Chad Maticus Farquaad, the most powerful being in the universe, and why is he so powerful? Well, it's actually surprisingly easy. This guy watches a lot of TV. Now, I know many of you might have been told over the years that watching TV will get you nowhere in life, and if you spend all day just watching stuff, you're not even living. However, those people are quite simply wrong. As using copious quantities of exploits, we're going to prove that watching TV is overpowered. Now, without further ado, make sure you're sat back, relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of Yorkshire tea in hand, and if you're feeling especially fantastic, you can even like the video. Now, let's survive the zombie apocalypse in these stupid this way possible. Now, we start out in some kind of small caravan. Lovely. There's not much in here. However, there is teacups, and teacups are honestly very important. We also start out with a baseball bat. Not that we're going to particularly need it, because now that we have our lovely baseball bat, we're going to immediately leave this place, because we need to find ourselves a TV. That's right, we need a TV as soon as possible. So I'm going to try this house here. It looks like it might have a TV. We just need to break in using the windows, because if the front door doesn't open, don't worry, the windows can. There you go. Open sesame. Oh, bees. Okay, we set off an alarm. That's fine. There's a TV in here. Uh, we might find what we're looking for. Nope, we have not found what we're looking for. And now we need to run as every single zombie in a 400 gazillion mile radius is now walking in this direction. Okay, there is another TV in there, but I don't think it's the kind that has a VHS tape that we want. Right, let's try this house. Is there a TV? There's a TV. It's an old TV though, so it won't work. This house, however, has a modern TV. Perfect. Did this one just have an alarm go off as well? Oh my god, there's just alarms everywhere. What the hell game please please can we not just have alarm after alarm i don't want it oh for goodness sake now luckily for us we move a lot faster than trees than anyone else so uh we can just simply cruise our way through the forest the zombies will mostly ignore us we don't really need to pick a fight with any of them as we haven't properly been able to start our glorious quest of breaking this game oh there's a couple of zombies here and sadly i want to walk through this way so um i'm gonna need to actually start killing a few of them so this is one dead 
head and actually just looks like the others are just going to walk away, which I guess works for me as well. All right, now a few hours have passed, but finally, after a very long adventure, we've managed to find ourselves the perfect situation possible. And that is the one, the only VHS tape of Woodcrafting Episode 2. Now, you see, there are a few ways to gain experience in this game. One is to simply do things, run around, and you'll learn how to run around, hit stuff, and you'll learn how to hit stuff. But the other way is to cheat by instead using a television. Now, there are a few ways of learning things on the TV. For example, we can turn on this TV, tune into the Life and Living channel, and now we'll start hearing the wonders of whatever show is playing on the Life and Living channel, although I don't think there is anything on today that we particularly want to listen to. The other way is to gain experience from watching VHS tapes, which are absolutely lovely things. There's only one issue. VHS tapes, yes, will teach you new recipes, and they'll also give you experience based on certain skills, but you can only watch them once. However, that's actually not the case. That's just what the developers want you to think, as we're about to demonstrate by power leveling our carpentry skill. So it's basically day one of our survival, and we have one point in carpentry. Carpentry is ridiculously powerful. The higher it is, you can start building walls that not even a horde of zombies are going to be able to break down. Equally, all of your man-made weapons are going to be really, really powerful. So we're going to play our lovely carpentry tape, and this is going to teach us all about some woodworking. Oh yeah, we're watching Woodcraft, ladies and gentlemen. Not only does it lower our boredom, but it also is going to teach us things. So we're going to start with the basics, the kind of stuff they teach a kindergarten. Well, that's all we need, ladies and gentlemen. Do you like floors? This guy likes floors. There we go. We're gaining a carpentry skill. As you can see, we just gained 65 experience in one go and then 130 experience. Okay, every time we get a pop of this, it is another 65 experience. This is amazing. Almost hit carpentry level two and we're bam. There we go. That's carpentry level two and we're also a little bit of the wind to carpentry level three. This is amazing. This is a fantastically good start. And there we go. We basically got a huge amount of ticks of carpentry and we're now level three. That's pretty good. To put this into comparison with the amount of experience we gained, this right here is a large oak bed, which we can disassemble with a hammer. We have a 35% chance of doing it. It's going to take a large amount of time, but we can do it. There we go. That is a bed disassembled and that gave us 50 experience, which is quite frankly pathetic when we compare it to the fact that we can watch this VHS tape. There's only one issue. We can only watch the VHS tape once. If we start playing it again, we're not going to get any experience. We're not going to get any boredom reduction because we've already seen it. We already know how to do all of the carpentry. However, that's not the case. Quite simply, just leave the server that you're playing on. Join the server that you were playing on. And now that we've loaded back into the world, all we're going to do is simply press play on the television again, and the show's going to start up. There we go. We're getting our boredom reduction already, which means things are going fantastic. So once again, we're just going to sit ourselves in front of the TV and there's our first tick of carpentry lovely stuff and our second one and well bam there we go that's carpentry level three we can already start making even more things now but of course if we don't reload into the server and just press play again absolutely nothing is going to happen when we watch the television so instead we're just going to leave and rejoin and get our carpentry level up just a little bit higher right well you join me back just as the helicopter event literally just finished seconds ago and as you can see I'm now carpentry level five which is of course very jazzy and I realize that the biggest bottleneck we currently have when it comes to getting infinite experience is the fact that we lack multiple VHS tapes which makes our ability to level up very very limited so in order to level up faster I'm going to get myself more VHS tapes also who the heck was that just running outside the window is that Connor <laughs> that is Connor he's there I got a second he's going to the wrong house he is going to the wrong house right I'll climb over the fence to get to him anyway I'm gonna take him and we're gonna go on a quest to find VHS tapes in homes and I'll be back in a bit as soon as we found some lovely VHS tapes. A few VHS tapes later. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. As you can see, I'm joined by the illustrious and beautiful Connor Brow in our matching leather jackets. Oh, aren't we just the best? How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Good. You've actually been playing this game a fair bit whilst I've been uh, busy doing other stuff. And you know what? I think it's paid off. We've kind of reached the point where we can start doing this exploit at a crazy level. There's just a few problems. Problem number one, uh, the power has gone out, which is bad very bad however we can solve that with a generator and there's a generator nearby so that's no problem there's just one issue we need food and we need water and you just ate some food that was bad why would you eat that why would I was you hungry okay put any spare food you have into the bag because what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the school bag okay so i'm going to put a tea bag in here because i want the tea bag i'm also going to put in a jar of peanut butter and uh some antidepressants uh and some fruit jam there we go uh so there you go you okay. pop some coffee in 
there. Take the goddamn coffee out. The world does not need more coffee. Right, that's perfect. We've got some food in there, and we've also got some water bottles at the bottom, which is important, because otherwise, you know, we might run out of water eventually. Now, what you're going to do, Connor, is just stand on top of the bag, like me, and then what we're going to do is you right-click on it, and then hover over grab, and then hover over school bag, and then we're going to click school bag at the same time. Thanks to server-side lag, we are both going to pick up this item, and consequently, duplicate the bag and all of the items inside of it. Do you want me to put my pistol in there? Uh, you can. Does your pistol and rifle have ammo? I've got tons of ammo. Then yes, put the guns in the bag. <laughs> right, stand over the school bag, hover over grab, yep. hover over school bag. You've got to stand on top of it. Yep. So that way there's there's no delay. Okay, now three, two, one, click. Oh, fuck, it's a zombie! Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Lovely, good job, you killed it. Right, hover over the school bag. <laughs> we have to basically s s uh, go down at the same time. Two, one, click. I got it! We got it! We both got it! Bam! We Yay. duplicated the school bag. Look at that. Look at that. So we now have double the amount of items that we previously had. All right, let's go to the car that we can drive. And then we'll drive the car down to here. Fill up the gas canister again. Then drive the car back home to the generator. Then get the generator. And then we've pretty much beaten the game. Wait, do we don't need to drive it back down. Can't we just dupe the can on its own? Oh, you're right. Yeah, why we even need... Yes, you're completely correct. Yes, we can just duplicate the canister with the petrol inside of it. But Connor, I don't even know why I even bother with resources anymore because you are correct we can just summon them indefinitely my goodness it's kind of like why even grow food or be a farmer in this game when you can just duplicate perfectly good processed we cheese eating corn beef and cheese forever corn beef and cheese for life that's the dream who doesn't dream of corned beef and cheese three two one take okay so let's duplicate petrol and there you go I've got it full can full yay. can yay lovely so that's that's infinite petrol sorted the lack of infinite resources in the universe is now solved. We no longer need to uh, have any other source of power other than petrol. Uh, the environment will love us for it. I'll anyway, put it in the boot. You put it in the boot. Lovely. And then you can climb into the car and let's uh, let's go pick up that generator. We made it home. Lovely. Okay. I will now park up the car. Please bring the generator over and I will bring over a television. Okay. Now, the, you might be wondering why on earth we bothered getting a TV into the house. And the reasoning is simple. This means we can now watch all of the entertainment, all of the additional <laughs> VHS tapes we can now have access to. Just think of the power. Um, where are they? They're all stacked up out of here. I've turned it on. Oh my god, there's so many damn VHS tapes. Look at this. Oh yeah, it, it works. The TV is on. Uh, let me drag a VHS tape in. Come come inside and get comfy. We're going to listen to the fitness club and how to do squats. Oh, here we go. Welcome back to Simon's Fitness Club, girls and men. Yeah, here we go. Now, I think this could improve our fitness stat, which if it does is stupid, because basically that means instead of doing exercises to improve our fitness stat, we could just watch TV all day, but I'm not sure. Okay, nope, that was completely useless. That only load our boredom, right? Get rid of that rubbish, useless VHS tape and let us add in exposure survival foraging. Yes, now this is a true manly man's video. So now that we have infinite electricity because we can duplicate petrol canisters and we have infinite food and water because we can duplicate any food or water item we need, we also now have infinite experience because we can just watch whatever VHS tape we need on the television, which is going to grant us experience in any format. In this case, we're going to start learning how to forage. There you go. That's a whole bunch of experience right there. I was 86 experience in one go. Ooh. Now I'm up to 172 and bam, that's again. I'm going to get level three foraging from this. Oh, wow. There we go. I just leveled up. I'm level one. Level one foraging. Now, normally you can only watch a VHS tape once, but of course, all we have to do to be able to watch the same VHS tape again is leave the server and rejoin the server, which is perfectly bad. Balanced, as all things should be. Many exploits later. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. A huge amount of time has passed. Um, so much so, in fact, that we've basically spent the last few hours just logging in and out of the server watching TV. And as a result, I am now one of the best chefs in the known universe. I can also basically build an entire house in five seconds with my carpentry statistics and with my foraging abilities. Well, I can just enter into the search mode and the uh, searchable area is gigantic. And look at all of this stuff I found on the floor. Oh my goodness, it's a whole bunch of tea. It's Wild tea. Let's grab a grab a nice hot cup of tea. Yeah, we've been duplicating these lovely warmed uh, hot teacups uncooked, but they're amazing. They're the greatest thing in the universe because they lower all of the negatives, like first and unhappiness. Ah, oh, and they're so refreshing. And of course, in order to keep us alive, we need more than water. And so for that, we have uh, summoned a huge amount of beans onto the floor. We have uh, maybe about 700 cans of beans in total, but turns out they're stupidly easy to duplicate with uh, the whole backpack exploit. So um, everything works. 
I mean, we can even show off how we can duplicate a single can of beans. I will grab one bean. Uh, in fact, actually, I will grab more than one bean. I will grab uh, how many beans? I will grab, okay, I've grabbed a whole 10 sets of beans. This is a huge amount of beans, okay? Uh, and then I will store the beans inside of something. Okay, so this is how you solve the entirety of world hunger using just beans in a plastic bag. Pick up the plastic bag, pop the plastic bag full of beans inside the boot. Okay, and then Connor, are you ready to grab hold of that plastic bag I'm and put ready. it in the inventory? Okay, three, two, one. And uh, I grabbed it. Did you? I got the plastic bag. And it's full of beans. So uh, that's fantastic. I can now just put the bean bag on the floor now and just take the beans out of it. And we've just doubled the amount of beans in the known universe. It really is that easy, ladies and gentlemen, to summon beans out of thin air. This <laughs> seems like the most uncomfortable bean bag to sit on I've ever seen. As we have uh, near infinite ammunition and also near infinite beans, I think it's time that we just go kill a bunch of zombies using our amazing guns. So, uh, um, let's go hop in the car. Where should we drive to that's actually useful? Where we'll have large zombie quantities? I suppose we just head straight into the main road. We just head to that main road and make some noise, probably near the police station, as I'm sure there might even be a shotgun in there. So the reason we want a shotgun is because it's the best gun in the game to train up your aiming stat on, because aiming isn't something you can watch a VHS tape to learn. The only way to level up is to hit zombies, and of course, because shotguns have a widespread and they hit the most stuff. You basically ah. just hit a few hordes with a shotgun. Doesn't matter if you kill anything. And uh, then you'll level up your aiming stat. It is starting to get bright outside. So I think we can now begin Operation Break into the police station to get shotgun. Yeah, that's the room with the guns. What is up with the RNG? There's a rifle. That's it. The goddamn same rifle. The worst rifle in the game unless it's physically fighting other players. Right, well. There's nothing in here. There's a box of shotgun shells. Yeah, that was actually completely useless. Okay, let's go uh, rob some police police cars, I guess. Why are there no police cars here? Where are the police cars? Okay, we're gonna drive up to where we saw that police car and break into it. Sounds like a plan. Oh wait, there's a car key on the ground. Taxi key. <gasps> That's a much better car. Let's go Vim. check that police car. Vroom, 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 vroom. Right, here's the police car. And as you can see, this is how hard it is to level up aiming without having a shotgun because yeah. we've killed so many zombies with guns and I'm yet even to hit level one. Yeah, it's not been going very well. Oh, there's a shotgun in the boot. There's a shotgun Ooh. in the boot. Okay, cool. Okay, let's shoot the, the shotgun. shotgun. First, drop the rifle that we have on our back because it is useless. Okay, now um, I'm going to put these shotgun shells into a box and then put them in the boot. Get ready to grab the shotgun. Three, okay. two, one, grab. Bam, we both have the shotgun and get ready to grab the shells. So three, two, one, grab. Okay, I've got two boxes of shells of you as well. Two boxes of shells and a shotgun. Right, time to um, kill some of these zombies. So now that we have a shotgun, uh, well, we both have shotguns and now we both have infinite ammo because of item duplication. I'm just gonna merge them up into like a small horde. So that way uh, I can, you know, hit as many as possible with a single shot, aim like so, and shoot. Seriously, is it jammed on its first shot? It has. Okay. <laughs> There's a pack of four here. Let's um, aim and bam. There we go. Two with one. Oh. So much better. The aim is so good. Oh, I just reached reloading level one. Good job. Now we get in the car and we do drive-by taxi shootings. Wind down your window. I wind down mine. Bam. <laughs> it's about you can load that it is ridiculous. you're driving. Oh, right. If you load yours down. Okay. Oh, three and one. Good job. Shotgun is so good. Oh, I'm getting hungry. I think I just leveled up. I just leveled up reloading. Oh, no, aiming. Yep, that's level one aiming. We've done it. All right, out that window. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, cruise control. No, oh, cruise control. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. That was the only way to get the car to stop. I kid you not. Ah, yeah, ah, no. ah. Close window, close window. Look at window closed. Oh, my God. I'm okay. Somehow none of that hit me. How did we manage to get out of that? Pure power and luck. Let's just um, try and summon some zombies up into a horde. There's a lot of risk involved in this. There is, but that's what it's like to survive in the zombie apocalypse. Right, let's get out and kill this. Oh, my goodness. The gun is jammed again. The gun. This is, this is absolutely... Madness. Jammed again. <laughs> As we're really bad with guns, they will jam near constantly. Oh my goodness, it just jammed again. Oh, it's because the gun's condition is so poor. I wondered oh. why. We have a really low quality uh, shotgun. Oh my god, even my pistol's blocked. Oh, wow. Oh, it just jammed again. 
Oh, the game's I love the sound of it just <laughs> jabbing on us, bro. I think this is it. Like, we've done it, Connor. There is, at this point, nothing else we can do that will make us better. We have infinite ammunition, infinite food, infinite sources of experience. So, um, I think we, we've done it. We've done it. Round of applause. We did it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our YouTube members and patrons who make these videos all the more possible. Seriously, thank you very much, you lovely sausages. And hey, if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now. Hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one where I inevitably break yet another game. And I'm afraid that's goodbye for now.